So, when I use stones in magic, I use them very often in alignment with the day of the week because I do spell work aligned with the energy of each particular day and stones do align with certain days. I use them in incense. I put a chip in oils that I am making and I use them for divination. Other than that, they are a meditation tool as much as anything else. This small bowl, which generally stays on my altar, has polished stones for each of the spheres that I have currently. I use stones for divination. Now this is something that I was taught as a baby witch, but it was actually, we were taught more using common stones, stones of the area in which we live. Over the years, I played with a system for myself of divination. So in order to work divination with these stones, I sit and meditate on the challenge. Let's use it for instance. Perhaps I was going through a time when I felt I was too in the cave, that I was introspective and withdrawn to the point of not feeling that was a balanced part in my life. And my question is, why am I here and how can I move forward? I would pick what I consider to be the root stone. In that case, it would be purely objective. I have certain stones which mean certain things to me. It would be obsidian for that. We all know the power of the dark and going within and the amazing power of obsidian. But there is a flip side to the characters of the stones, which represent when they become an imbalance in us. It becomes my root stone. I then cast lots, just like you would for working with actual runes. And I pick the three closest stones to the obsidian. So, what I have decided in that particular call, which is, I'm not doing this as a serious call at this moment, I'm actually not having a problem with this, so that's why I can safely pick that as a demonstration, is blue lace agate, unikite, and zebra stone. I then cast those and what I'm looking for now, oh interesting, what I'm looking for now is the stone that's closest to me is the first action that I can consider to balance this challenge. Then there is the near future and then there is the looking forward. In this case, the agate and the unikite are very tied and see how far out the zebra stone is. Normally when two stones fall this similar, this would be my Normally it would be the near-term, medium-term, and looking forward, but we have two who landed identically as the near-term, the ones that are closest to me, is the blue lace agate and the unikite. When they land that equally, it almost always means I need to look for what the stones have in common. What I would get that these two have in relationship to each other is accepting, accepting something will bring balance. So my thought here would be that if this were a real divination, I would be looking to a source for what am I not accepting because I'm not allowing balance because there's something I am not looking at. Am I using, in other words, this as avoidance? That was the feel I would get from that if that were true reading. And then way out here by itself we have the zebra stone. Now what I like about zebra, zebra stone, if the challenge had been Annie's just too far into the dark and she's withdrawn. Zebra stone, when you think about what are you not acknowledging to be balanced, zebra stone could very well be the joy of living in the now. This would be a powerful drop if this were 
a challenge I was dealing with because it might be that this is where I need to be but within it I have not done the work it takes to achieve balance. The result of the zebra stone when this happens is comfort with the here and the now. So they all together become a very powerful combination. I will also use stones almost in a reverse where the root stone will be a stone I select which is something I want to achieve. So let's go back to our zebra stone. If I use that as my root stone and what I wanted to achieve was balance in the here and now, we'll pick that correspondence. Let's just say that's what I wanted for the zebra stone. <laughs> I love how these things work. Here is the zebra stone. Unikite, obsidian, mm, let's say the milky quartz is the next closest. So the fun of these kind of things is Unikite, Zebra Stone, and Obsidian are coming together for me a lot. Now, just so you know, I will be now personally spending a little time on this after this is done to see what the relationship particularly of these three would be. And then we add in the little quartz on top of that. So if I was saying that what do I need to be balanced in enjoying the here and now, obsidian obviously means quiet, reflection, calming down, going within. How could Unikite lend itself to being content in the here and now? One of the powers of the uh, Unikite is the bringing of our attention to the consciousness in the here and now. So what I would get from that is experiencing quiet, not letting myself be busied, and contacting with my consciousness in the here and now. Now also in that was a little bit of agate. Agate would be interesting in combination here if the question were here how to be happy in the here and now. Agate is very powerful when it comes to just do it. Just accept. The power of agate all very often is for me the put up and shut up, or as my grandmother used to say, if there's a situation you can change, change it. If it cannot be changed, learn to live with it. So those are a pretty interesting combination of a lesson of how to be happy in the here and now. Focus and quiet and going internal. Really being connected to your consciousness and presence in the here and now. And do it, deal with it, it is what it is. So I may actually take a meditation on these myself. That came through as a very powerful message for me as I was using that as an example for you.